Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of Wrestling with the Future. I'm your host, Psychic Media Angelo, joined tonight by female wrestling historian, author extraordinaire. This guy knows more about women than, than I do, and that's saying something. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Chris. <laughs> Chris Bergstrom <laughs> is America's foremost authority on female wrestling in America, and we have an amazing, amazing guest tonight. She is nothing short of legendary in the world of women's wrestling. Started her career in 1971. Trained, of course, under the uh, fabulous Moolah. And she was indeed fabulous on many different levels. Our guest tonight, the incomparable Joyce Grable. Joyce, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. I'm very glad to get to do this interview. And so you just come at me with whatever you want to. Well, I, I should tell people this is the very first interview you've ever done one-on-one -on -one where you didn't have uh, a half a dozen women trying to interrupt your conversation. <laughs> no, because we tend to talk over each other and you start a story and before you can finish it, they come in with a different story and you never finish your story. I know. I know. I had. I have to tell you something, Joyce. I did a show about six months ago called Ladies' Night Out. And we're actually doing a part two. Uh, Chris is, is helping me with that one. And I had, oh my God, I had Princess Victoria, Casey Carlisle. I had, um, oh my God, who else did I have on? Oh, and I had on... Um, Sherry Martell's best friend, Kathy Fitzpatrick. I don't think I said five words the entire show. <laughs> it was, I just sat back and, you know, here's what I did the whole night. Drinking my coffee. <laughs> <Go ahead. Yeah. laughs> so listen, um, you know, you look like a, a very sweet, kind woman. You don't look like you could... <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing at me. Oh, my God. And so you don't look like you could kick ass, but I got to tell you something. I've I've watched a few of your matches. I've actually watched more than a few of your matches. You was quite a little butt kicker. Yeah. Did, 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 did you? Did, well, I did you? I was going to, I was just going to say, did you grow up with like a lot of brothers where you had to fight your way to the top? Right. Jeez. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. They and trained you good. Yes. Oh, wow. So, Chris, we, uh, we're we in the presence of a an actual legend tonight. <laughs> I know. I, I'm kind of nervous. Uh, in front oh, of the great don't be Joyce nervous. Joyce Grable. Um, as, you all, as you know, that that face. <laughs> look at this woman. She's a kind, gentle woman. Yeah. But yeah. don't piss her off because she'll put oh, yeah, that, no. <laughs> that I've famous seen arm bar of hers and to break see, your arm to off. To see what I, Joyce can do to people. <laughs> I, I, I'm on a dime. Boom. Okay. And I would be, once I walked through those curtains, and I, I was Joyce Grable all the way. Mm -hmm. I, I met, from the time I did, I went into my character. Yeah. And yeah. you could not. I did not sign autograph. Nothing like that. When I turned heel, when Wendy right. and I turned heel. Well, you know Never what? That's a great that. place to start. Yeah. Joyce, you led me to a great place to start with. I had um, Nikita Brezhnikov on the show a couple weeks ago, and we were talking exactly about that, about you know when you are a heel. You're not supposed to sign autographs. You're not no. supposed to sell merch. The baby face no. is the one that sells the merch and signs the autographs. So let me ask you, what happened to Heat? Why is there no Heat anymore? I, because they don't work the crowd. Uh, and they want to go out there smiling. You can't. you got to go out there like, I'm the queen of... Wrestling, and you try to take me on. 
And and they don't do that now. They all smile. If you watch any of mine when I me and Wendy were ill, yeah. then you could it one of us always was looking at the crowd, we pick out someone special in the crowd yeah. and we'd work with them. I, they didn't know it, but we could tell, Oh yeah, I need a lot of heat here. And I always hollered at the crowd and and that they felt like they were part of the match. Well, you know, you said something important that that I hope people latched on to. They work the crowd. It the, now it seems, and and Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like now they're spending too much time working the television camera yes. instead of the crowd. Yeah, it definitely seems that, like that, just. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, please. they do. This the cameras instead of looking at the crowd and getting them involved because when you got them involved you don't have to take too many bumps like a bump galore now yeah back when i wrestled in the day uh, if we took two big bumps in a match when the baby face was making that comeback right we had them eaten out of our hands and that that's where Wendy Richter and I were such good teammates. What she couldn't do, do. what I couldn't do, she could do. And, and we knew what each other was capable of and we we grew from that. Yeah. And you know and that that's another thing that you said that's really important. You know and, and I when I especially with with women's wrestling when i watch women's wrestling now i feel like i'm watching more of a beauty contest than a wrestling match and that's the problem they don't know how to work heat they don't know how to work the crowd they're more interested in not messing up their hair back in joyce brable's day they'd grab a handful of that hair and rip it out of your head you know um when I was going with Matt to some of her WWE things, you know, uh, when she was doing the TVs and stuff like that, and I was back there and I saw Sue and the girl sitting there, weaving in and, you know, yeah. I, was, I was agitated, maybe because she was getting into dementia pretty bad. Mm. And, and I asked the girls in the dress, I said, how do y'all, you know, not pull out each other's hair? <laughs> we have to I said, yeah. We have to have that hair, especially uh, like the other chin ponytail. Right. Um, and I grab that ponytail and yeah. I just, uh, I nail her by the ponytail. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all put my hair in here, like I just put. And all the hair would have come out. <laughs> Chris, pick up on that, brother. That's one thing today, you know, that you really don't see that in the golden age of women's wrestling you saw all the time was hair mares. Women just grabbing a hold of yeah. someone's oh, hair yeah. and just throwing them across the ring. Today they couldn't do it because, like Joyce said, their weaves would fall out. <laughs> you know who had the best, and I'll tell you, you, you'll know who I'm talking about, Joyce. You'll know exactly who I'm talking about. The best hair mare that I ever saw, Donna Cristinello. Mm. Yeah. That woman, yeah. she would grab you from yeah. like underneath the hair. <laughs> and oh man, she grabbed a handful of it. And you know, she wasn't yeah. working it, she was shooting. She grabbed yeah. that hair. You had to make it look good. Exactly. That's the problem now. They don't care. Uh-uh. They just don't care. I'll tell you what. I, I, will put, I will put women of the golden era of women's wrestling up against the so-called divas, which I hate that term, by the way. I will put them up against these divas any day of the week. And I'll guarantee you that you won't find 
a blonde bimbo standing. Okay? <laughs> Not a one. Because these women will tear them up. So let's talk about that. You know, before you joined us tonight, Chris and I were talking about uh, the real heat, legit heat that existed between the women. And it seemed to be much more a hotter heat than the guys. You know, guys would just punch each other in the face, right? <laughs> And be done with it. Right. But the women were brutal with each other. So how did if you had heat with a woman back in the in the locker room or back in the dressing room, how did you personally deal with like somebody giving you you know uh, you know giving you uh, your heat and uh, and how did you deal with it? Like legit heat. Well, uh, if I went to the wedding. I, I can work with anyone, uh, even if we had trouble outside of the ring or whatever. I could go in the ring and work with them. But if they, if when I gave them a big punch and if they didn't sell it, mm -hmm. that next one was perfect. because the thing is, you sell for me and I'll sell for you. Yeah. But if you choose not to, uh, I learned early that to learn a, a few shooting holes because I worked with one girl and I was very new and she wasn't moving and, and she tried to hurt me. Yeah. And I said, no, this will never happen again. And so I, I made sure I learned how to lock up and put holes the shooting way on them yeah. so that it ever happened again. And when I would work with girls at this room, girls, I yeah. would always tend to stronger at first for them to know that, hey, just because I look like I don't have muscles, I'm not a <laughs> strong person. Well, now, so, so it, sounds like, well, it sounds like what you're telling me is if they got smart with you, they were going to get a receipt. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because I must have took me growing up. I would be the one that took him to Canada. Yeah. In love with Frank. I used to took him to his territory and trained him and stuff. Well, I'm the one that get, got hurt because they were new and they didn't know better. I broke my nose three times, it, and it, all three times was when they do a cross body block and they pull the elbow back. Yeah. And it hit me right in the nose, and then the blood would flow. Yeah. Um, but th that was, I guess, my job was. Taking you girls on the road. Uh, it's me and Wendy want out. Yeah. No, well, you know what? That, that's a good place to. That's a good place to start here. Um, because I'm going to go back a little bit, just a just a little bit back to when you started. Okay. Um, you started in '71. Of course, you know you trained with the fabulous Moolah. What was it about wrestling that you said? You know what? I could do this. You know, I. It, it, maybe it sounds a little crazy for you know a girl, you know, a young girl back then, to get into this you, kooky world of wrestling. But what what was it that that you thought to yourself? Hey, I could do this. Oh, I didn't want to get into wrestling. Uh, <laughs> that was a torture in my mind. I was uh, a friend of mine. Her asked me to go to at my auditorium, but she said, move back on her night and to see if she was fine. And she said, come go with me. We got front row to me. I already had a long blonde hair. Right. Mula came to her and Sticky Williams. They wrestled and it was over. And so she Mula walked across the stage 
Yeah. Go home. So she over there and she says, uh, oh, hey, I'm going to be a little And she says, right. what about the blonde sitting next to you? So <laughs> given her marriage, she had loved me at being called. And, and she said, oh, no, she don't want to do it. I wait a hundred around. I mean, I was a teeny tiny thing. Uh, and so she told me, if you bring her with you, then I will train the both of you. If she doesn't come, don't bother. Come. And so she brought me into going to Columbia, South Carolina at 19 years old. And, or, you know, get going out. And you what had, before time? this, you had no interest. Well, we've gone to the matches, but no, I, I wasn't ever going to watch it. And, and what, did you, you watch it on TV and stuff like that yet? Yeah. And, and you went to a few shows? So cool, yeah. And, and um, when I got up there, within two weeks, I got kids flying his scissors. And, and they were like, whoa. Because the other girls that came, my friend, and the other girl was there, yeah. it couldn't even the road bumps down yet. Right. And so they were really jealous of what I could do. But, hey, I was raised with boys. I could play baseball, softball. I could do it all. Oh, sure. And, and so when Mula saw that... Well, I have to tell you... I, I have to tell you, no, I, uh, I watched a, a few of your matches. I actually watched quite a bit of them. And, you know, you wrestled a very physical style. And people don't understand that, you know, that these women, they wrestled like the guys back then. But, now, Joyce, I'm going to ask you to speak up a, li a little bit because we're having a little trouble hearing you. But, so, I want you okay. to, uh, I want you to, uh, to walk me through... The first time you ever took a back bump, and what what was going through your mind? Did you think like, "Am I nuts doing this," or or did you like it? Like oh, a lot yeah. of people say, "I liked it." <laughs> oh, oh. you talking about training? Yes. Oh, oh, gosh, that that first bump. I said, "I can't do that," because you just. <laughs> That's that. why I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> After the first bump, and you kept going, huh? That's exactly why I asked you. <laughs> the morning, I said, I can't get out of bed. I mm -hmm. had to literally pull me up by the hair to get me up out of bed. That's how sore I was. I believe but, it. You know, I, I, and I want to tell was, people something. If and and Joyce, you you will appreciate this. I've been in the ring. I've taken some back bumps. I've taken a, a, quite a few bumps, in fact. And I got to tell people, it, what Joyce is telling you is absolutely true. I couldn't get out of bed for a week, okay? Yeah. I thought my body had died. It hurts. It hurts. But you know what's like anything else? You keep doing it, and you build up a tolerance to it. So right. you trained with... You know, of course, one of the the most iconic female wrestlers of all time, Lillian Ellison, the fabulous Moolah. And a lot of people have, you know, of course, she's, she's gone now, rest in peace. But a lot of people, Joyce, have very mixed emotions about Moolah. What was your first impression of uh, fabulous Moolah? Well, she was really... She was really quick, honey. This, babe, you know, and she was a very southern lady. But I mean, we all have our bad in us. Uh, right. It's like with documentary about Mulder. Right. I just thought that they did hand with good because the preacher and one or two of the girl rappers that were on there. When you're young, you do things that when you get older, you're not too proud of. <laughs> and yeah. so the fact was, 
I would want someone shaking my closet right now and my skeletons come rolling mm. out from when I was 20, 21 years old. Yeah. Wow. My son was very embarrassed. And, um, and that's why I feel they treated Mula. I mean, the Bible says, and I'm not going to be a Bible for, you know, ye who without sin cast the first stone. Exactly. Amen. If those Amen. Had ever committed a sin, then they could say something really bad about Mula. Yeah. That sense, they were just as bad, and trust me, I know a lot on <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Joyce, can I ask you a question about that? Because it's, it's exactly what you're talking about right now. There are people who said that if Mula liked you, that she was extra hard on you because she knew that you had it in you. But there are, right. there are other people who said that if Mula was nice to you, she was about to cut you. Well, when I say, no. you know, cut me, you know, to get get rid of you. Get rid of, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, she was rough on me because she knew that I was going to be good. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's, that's what I was getting at, I, yeah. She knew I was going to be good. Joyce, you can do it. You can do that. You know, you can take that button. You can take a back button. Right. I mean, she was always out there telling me, you can do it. And right. then I did it. But the thing is, she she wasn't out. She would have to come out. The main girl to tell her, that, hey, go to, to this place. And so she would come out to the gym and she would critique what I was doing. And, and that way she would know, okay, I can do that in the rain with her the next time. Right. And, and, you know, uh, she, would, she never, she only got into things maybe once or twice the whole time. Mm -hmm. the time. Wow. But right. Sure that someone capable of trying to was out there. Yeah. Go ahead, but, Chris. So, were you primarily, you know, got in the ring and trained with, would that have been like Donna Cristinello and ladies at the time like that? Yeah. Donna, Vicky Williams, uh, Peggy Patterson. Okay. Oh, there's a the name I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and wow. they were out there with me every day, every day training, twice a day, wow. morning and afternoon. And wow. it was, it, it, yeah, I it haven't was, heard that name in a long time. Peggy Patterson, holy smokes. Jeez. So go ahead, Chris. This is this is your chance, brother. Okay, well, you know, I I have questions all the time. So well, ask. I'm, That's why yeah. you're here. <laughs> I'm very curious yeah. about um, how did you feel about uh, having to take on the name of a lady who had used the name before, before you, since there was the Joy Scrabble before. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, Joyce, you uh, and I talked about that a little last night. Yeah. Right. T tell everybody what uh, we're talking about. So in case people don't know, there were actually two female wrestlers with the name Joy Scrabble. So go ahead. I'll let you pick up from that point. Okay, oh. the first Joyce Grable, she was, her real name was Joyce Fowler. Yeah. She married George Becker, which George Becker and uh, he wrestled in the Carolinas. Him and oh, Johnny sure. Weaver. Were, yeah, they were tag team champions. So, yeah. Yeah. And so she married him. And so then she started wrestling under Joyce Fowler. She didn't do Joyce Grable, but for a very short time. Right. Uh, and so when, when I trained, uh, Joyce and I, we had really a lot of features, the same thing. We didn't actually look alike, but our body shape and the features were there. Right. And, but she, Mula asked him, uh, would I consider using the name Joyce Grable? 
told me about this thing. Everybody acted like she was so secretive that you never got told anything. She talked to me about everything, you know, before yeah. I did it. Uh, and so, uh, but I told her I didn't take in the name. Uh, I said, as long as I'm the one in the pay, as long as the other Joyce comes to pay, I'm happy to get for So we went with Joyce Gregory. Now, a lot of the guys didn't know the di A lot of the guys that had been with Joyce Gregory, <laughs> they thought I was the same one. Right. <laughs> And I did pull a few ribs on them because Mula knew who they were and said, she's to sleep with him, uh, you know, do this <laughs> and all. And I did, and we, we had fun with it. Absolutely. We, you've got to have fun. And, Absolutely. And, and really Incredible. I Chris, say, now I know you got tons of questions you, you know you're the historian here oh so yeah you, you, this is yeah. like a once in a lifetime opportunity it really is uh so, so have was, at it brother this is yeah this is your opportunity go for it so i was reading about you and judy martin going against uh jerry roberts and steve o in the first intergender tag team match yeah. tell us about yeah. that okay that was one of my favorite things. Ole Anderson was looking, and so Oldie. that's what he wanted to do. And so when Vern Gagne saw it, he, he called Ole and said, you can't do this. <laughs> this is not getting over. Women should never be in the ring with men, like in a one-on-one -on -one and mm -hmm. stuff. But Ole, he, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So every week, Jim Butler and I would go to uh, Atlanta TV and make interviews and stuff. In fact, one of my interviews that really got me heat with a lot of the boys was I said, go into a courtroom any day of the week. And us women, we take all, we take everything you men have work all your lives for <laughs> we get it we get everything and we're going to get everything in this match ah some of the guys especially ones that went through hard divorces and we know a few that of them. my friend is how you get heat yeah that's yeah. how you work heat and, and that's how i got it and and so then judy martin and so we were in the omni and no one wrote us a script. We didn't practice with the guys. Yeah. Because we just didn't do that then. They were all the way over on the other side of the army from us. Right. We didn't know if they got top slot the same way we did. If they got a headlock on the same side. We, we knew nothing about nothing. All we knew was what... Uh, we were on and who we were then. Yeah. And you'll know it when it happens. Now, Joyce, were, I mean, were we, you guys given, I was going to say, were you guys given finishes to do? Like you, you knew yeah. your finish? No? Uh, oh. No. no. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. But, oh, all of it in the ring. Uh, and so we do when it, this is it. You know, and stuff, and uh, at, but the match looked really good. And Bobby Simmons only told Bobby Simmons to go out, sit at ringside, and said, if, if, if people start using vulgarity about, yeah. you know, kick her here, kick her feet, <laughs> just stop. Uh, because it wasn't her. He wasn't for sure this is the first time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We had those people mad at us. They were saying, kill us from the start of the match. Uh, my brother, it was the first time he had seen me wrestle, and he sat way up in the balcony. And this guy, he was just cussing me up there. He turned around and he said, 
that's my sister you're talking about. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's funny. I'm, oh, wow. None of my family, even to my husband, never smartened them up the whole time we were married. Wow. Oh, wow. None of my, my mom, they knew nothing. Hmm. That was strictly kayfabe. You kayfabe your family. Yes. That and is a husband. great worker. Yeah. Take notice, Chris. That's a great worker. If you kayfabe in your family, you're good. We were married in Columbia because he was in the army. And he would travel with me nearby town. He never knew nothing. Let me ask you a question. You you know, you said that you were the women were separated from the men, right? right. Okay, so now were the heel women separate from the baby face women? Or were all the women together? It's it's going to what towns you were in. Oh okay. uh, if there's that many dress rooms. Uh okay. it, yeah, you just went by, uh, if there was three dressing rooms, then fine. If we could come out a different size. Right. If not with any size, it would just uh, Let me ask you a separate. question, because that, that, that's a good point that you're leading me into a, a question here. Uh, and I'm curious. You know, uh, wrestlers spend a lot of time on the road. And certain right. towns are, you know, certain, you know, especially... Back in, in the day, you know, not so much now with television, but back when you guys were on the road all the time, certain towns were like wrestling, you know, wrestling towns, wrestling hotbeds, you know, New York, Philadelphia, uh, Chicago, Texas, you know, anywhere in Texas, for crying out loud. Were, did you ever find that there were certain towns that were more receptive to women's wrestling than others? What, what, what were your like favorite towns to play? Okay. Uh, what matters if you really like the bigger towns, the bigger towns are going to make a bigger payday. Mm. But, right. Madison Square Garden, Jeff, I love Texas. I always thought I would go to Texas when I quit wrestling, but I did and I came back to Georgia, but I love Canada. Mm. I really ah, okay. Yeah. And uh, I did a lot of work in Canada. Uh, like I said, Nova Scotia, Bronze, Calgary. You know, I just like all through Canada. And that's and, um, something that a lot of people don't really talk about much these days, Chris, is the, the women's wrestling scene in Canada at the time. You know, they had some some really great female wrestlers came out of Canada. And, and it's a shame because, you know, a lot of these women are lost to history, Joyce. Yeah. You know? Right. And, and it's a shame. Yeah. That's like why we do this show. Mm -hmm. Is to preserve the history. Yeah. That's that's one of the biggest reasons I do this show. Because how many people get to sit with a legend like Joyce Grable and get so to I hear, can. you know, first hand stories. Yeah. You know, and because a lot of these women are gone. A lot of them don't do interviews. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of them are like, you know, married and have, you know, children and grandchildren and they left wrestling behind they don't want to talk about it anymore yeah so when you know when joyce grable says yeah i'd love to talk about it you bet your ass i'm going to jump on it yeah so go ahead chris talk Let, let's talk history okay let me think of uh some so good many questions, questions. I got oh so many that's questions. that's just it uh where to start here <laughs> start uh, at the beginning so, joyce <laughs> what what was your favorite match? Do you have a favorite match that stands out to you? A favorite opponent? Well, you know, right now, 
well, a couple of years back, I saw a video. I, I had them forgot about the match, but if you don't need to watch the match between me and Penny Mitchell. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, and you talking up. Uh, I really had ate my Cheerios that morning because she was new. Dick Worley was the referee. Mm. From he was place. he was my neighbor. Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> Dick Worley. Yep, yeah. Dick Worley, he, God rest he, his soul. He, lived oh, five yeah, years from here. Yeah, but he watched that match. Yeah. You would think, well, during the match, he gives me a backdrop. Oh, and, wow. <laughs> I mean, he was, and we didn't see none of this stuff now. It was mm. what happened in the ring. We saw that the people wanted it, and, and like I said, Penny was a very new person at the time, mm -hmm. and and so we wanted it to last. And when he gives me that backdrop, those people go wild. Mm. So yeah, get a chance to watch that video, and and then let me know what you think. And yeah. and and Dick well, Worley was a, as soon as the sentence. <laughs> oh yeah, and Dick was a small guy too. He wasn't a big guy. Right. And, and very thin. And very thin. Yes. But he was yes. a great referee. He he was the perfect referee. I don't care what anybody says. Dick Worley yes. was the perfect referee. I've got a question I'm, for well, you. Okay. I've got a question for you. Here you go. I got one for you. Um, you wrestled at a time when some of the greats were coming up, like uh, Wendy Richter, Lalani Kai, uh, Princess Victoria, of course, Judy Martin. Oh, my God, we can go on and on. Um, Princess Little Cloud. Um, God, let me think. Who else, Chris? Who am I missing? Didn't you help oh, train God. Wendy Richter and uh, Penny Mitchell and some of those names? Weren't you training a lot of them? Wendy, I was out there almost the whole time at church mm -hmm. because I knew we were going to eventually be partners. Oh, and, and I, she really got trained on the road. Oh wow, but that's what I. That's what I was hoping you would say that. I was hoping yes. you would say that because I wanted to ask you about that. I heard this. Mm -hmm. I heard that Wendy did not have like formal training. That she was trained like trial by fire. Hmm. No, uh, and when you came, she was, she was at what, six weeks? And I mean, she was good. She would always work out. Wendy, she was tall. Wendy had, you know, um, but no, she got, she learned to take so much. She learned all that stuff. And I took her on. Road to me as my partner. That's when we critique everything. You learn more on the road right. than what you do out in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> like if you see the people, they'll tell you what they want. They'll tell you if they want fun. They'll tell you if they want means. They'll tell you exactly what they want to say. And then if you give it to them, you got them eating out all my gifts. Go ahead, Chris. So, speaking of some of the girls you helped train, I, I remember uh, Bambi, Selena Majors, saying that yeah. she actually had asked you to formally train her. I trained her in my backyard here in Franklin, Georgia. Wow. Uh, I had always had my baby, especially mine. Wanted to get out. I wanted to have a baby. Mm -hmm. So I had my son, and then I had stuck three. When he was three months old, they started calling me. Uh, <laughs> about, Want me to get that last one? So I said, okay. And then Wendy saw me. She got in touch with me, and I tried to, uh, I set up a ring in my backyard. And I trained her. I had her first matches with her. 
because I said, I said I'll guarantee you this week's action and, and I will call Mula. And, and then Mula used her a few times for booking. Right. Uh, she wanted to be on her own and she made a good career out of it. Then yes, she did, did. Selena. Yeah. And she is great. The things they do at Wow Apple in you know, California, uh, she claims just about all of those girls. Yeah. She, but the, you know, I went out there. Uh, I flew out there their first match and did the same thing. Critiqued them. And this was just, what, a year ago. Hmm. Uh, wow. You know, it came like this, but she, yeah, she's one of my... I, I, I'm the mother of her. Yeah, you can be yeah. very proud of that student. She turned out very well, yeah. went on to great success. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. No, and now she's uh, training know, look, people today. Yeah, p picking up where, where Chris just left off, you know, uh, you become a mentor figure, you know, uh, throughout your career to several women who uh, some who go on to become very well known and some who don't. What's the difference in those people who make it and the people who don't make it? What's the one qualification? What quality do they have to have? in order to, to like to go full steam ahead where they actually make it to the big time they have to love what they're doing you can't go in there just to say i want to meet me you can't go in there and say i want to be a beauty queen you have to go in there loving what you're doing yeah once you want to get anymore get out of it because you're not going to be good at it anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what I tell them all. Uh, if the guys saw that they weren't fiery in their comeback, yeah. I just, uh, you know. You know, you Joyce, you hear, you hear people talk about the it factor. Then, you know, somebody's got it. You know, whatever the, the it factor yeah. is. So I'm going to ask you, what is it? What's the it factor? When you can go out there, do a match, take two or three bumps at the most, and have the people eating out the palm of your hand, that is the it factor. When you ain't got to go out there, and and just take bumps all whole 10 12 minutes yeah and they don't even go on anymore uh, you know, when we well, and that's a, a that's a real good point that's a real good point let me but, ask you a question like, about you know I, i'm sure you uh you know what's going on today with with women wrestlers now yes. so let's talk about probably the most famous woman wrestler of today becky lynch okay yeah. becky lynch of course you know uh as, as chris knows uh she's pregnant now and so she left to, you know to to have a baby but what she did was really unusual because she completely broke kayfabe not that it's you know i think kayfabe's dead anyway but yeah it, but let's put it this way if it wasn't she killed it mm. because she said i want to thank everyone you know for letting me live out my dream i played this wonderful character yeah. blah 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 yeah. and she completely took a part of my language but she took a giant shit on the business yeah. when she did that in my opinion what do you think of that i mean can she come back in this in the same capacity or will it or is her career over well she might not want a career anymore 
in my want to get out. I was on a board baby. Oh, you never can tell. Oh, but I'm like you, you know, you should, she should have went out there and it. Yeah. Uh, that she could never, uh, I put the box, but probably Vince was probably over to do it. Mm. Uh, uh, Vince, you know, the new things got him over. Uh, yeah. And, and it went in the air. Uh, and so I'm sure that this, this is a storyline I want you to tell. Yeah. And, and she told because uh, so, she can call the blame on the baby. You have to put the blame on the baby or the, whoever writing the show that day to how she handles yeah. the situation. Uh, but yeah. like I said earlier, a lot of women get in the business just to have an affair or marry one of the boys. Yeah. Uh, and so. Uh, I mean, and that, that's the possibility of marrying one of the guys. It and seems to me that you have to be completely committed to it. Yeah. Chris, yeah. I, I, Chris, you and Joyce yeah. have, a, have a conversation about what's, because you and I have, have talked a little bit. The, you and Joyce, to have a conversation about what's missing from women's wrestling. How can today's product learned from old school i'd like to hear that conversation watch the tapes of joyce grable vicky williams donna cristinello tony rose sit back and watch <laughs> i don't think a lot of today's women wrestlers actually really have studied you know some of the legends of the industry some of them yeah. you ask yeah. them who was your favorite wrestler and they'll name alicia fox or someone who was just around in the 2000s they don't and know their happen. history i mean what happened to people like you know uh penny banner and you know june yeah. buyer and uh you know uh, uh um um i'm sorry what's her name rita uh, Cortez, Rita Cortez, yeah, and uh, and people like that. What bothers me, and it really it saddens me more than bothers me, is that is they're sad. lost to history. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for people like Chris Bergstrom, and people like Joyce Grable, these names would just be you know footnotes yeah. in wrestling history, and that's. And and, it, and that's why we have to keep their their names and their their memories alive through their matches. And people mm -hmm. have to see their matches; they have to. So let me ask yeah, you, Joyce: okay. If you had to do it, knowing what you know, if you had to do it all over again, would you do it? If things could be back at the territories. Yeah. And the way oh, it was there you go. There you go. It. Oh, I would start Yes. I sure would. Because I had fun. I enjoyed it. I love wrestling. And I mean that and that's the whole thing. You got to love yeah. what you do. Yeah. But let, let yeah. me tell you a story. And I and I won't dwell on it too long. You know, I had leukemia. When I turned 60, I, I found out I had leukemia. I had to have a bone marrow transplant. Well, I was in Tampa, Florida. I did three back to back to back math. I was 60 years old. Oh my God. Yes, and wow. got the phone call that afternoon. You have leukemia. You're going to have to come in right away. Wow. And so, go in. It is a horrible, horrible ordeal. It really is. I had to put yeah. on there. So like, all my hair fell out. You know, during the time of this, they said, you have a murmur in your heart. If you live through this, we're going to check and see where that murmur comes from. 
I lived two years after my bachelor transplant. They do an echo for me. Right. And I was born two miles in my heart. Two miles wow. in my heart. They, they did work. the third one never developed. Uh, the doctor, the cardiologist, he watched my matches. He said, you should never live past your first match. Wow. It died. As much as you move, as hard as you've been gone and stuff. So they went and, and they put six valves in my heart. Now, in my aorta, I have six valves. Now, this just happened in uh, 16, 2016. So right. we're not talking about many years uh, but through, I don't know why I live through this, but I live through this. And some of the matches of me and Wendy, we are nonstop. We go, 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 go. Oh, yeah. And like, like, we need at least 15 minutes, or we need 20 minutes out of y'all tonight. Right. And so, what you do uh, in the group today, Start watching it, go to the bedroom, come back, and smash the door. I mean, they do yeah. that. Uh, you know, and you say, why? If they worked it right, some of these girls are really, really good out there. And yeah. they can really, like Dana Brooks. I know she's just, a, but her body shape and mind. Really, the first time I saw her on TV, I said, that really reminds me of me <laughs> when I started. And right, did. exactly, right. So let and me I, ask you, how are you holding up now? Oh, well, I still have to go to the doctor. Uh, my heart's good. I still have back with uh, the leukemia sometimes. But most of the time, you know, them red blood cells. Well, I was going to up. say, you know, God bless you because you look great. Yeah. You look like you're in terrific shape. You got, I tell you what, you know, who the hell knows, you know, wrestling may have saved your life. Right. Right. Isn't that the craziest okay. thing? Honestly, mm -hmm. really, if you think about it, it's crazy to think about. But I'll tell you what, yeah. I'm so glad. I am so glad that you're still with us. Thank you, yes. God. You know, I mean that literally. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. let's let's so, so let's smarten up. Let's smarten up the uh, these these young whooper snappers, <laughs> these young kids. Let's smarten them up. Tell them if they're thinking about a career in wrestling, the three things you have to have. If you're going to be successful as a woman in the male-dominated sport of wrestling, what are the three must must-haves? Obviously, you, you have to have, have a love for it, right? Yeah, you gotta have a good trainer. Mm -hmm. You gotta have that. They'll only show you how to take a show you how to take a bump. You gotta have a great personality. There you go. You got to be able to take criticism because you can't let someone say, that's terrible. You got to throw a picture at this and get mad at them and throw a picture. You got to be able to take that criticism. Yeah. You got to want and love the rest of the world. So it's a good in it. Well, I'll tell you what, that is uh, amazing and sound advice. Chris, you have questions. Oh, uh, to add on to what she said, too, uh, Sue Green still trains women wrestlers. She was just telling me oh, about yeah. her school, and it's like, there you go. One of the legends of the industry. Find her and start your career. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Joyce, I'll tell you what, we, uh, this was a fast hour. Oh, I, would love, uh, I would love to bring you back. 
It, yeah, we've already talked an hour already. <laughs> I didn't realize time was gone by that quick. It has. I would love to bring you back for part two. Can you do that with me? Oh, sure. I would love to bring you back. I'll tell you what. Um, Chris, let me ask you a question because you, you're you handling this for me. Do we, okay. <laughs> do we have... Um, uh, can we can we get Joyce on a ladies' night? Hey, that would be great. I'd you want to join us for ladies' night? Her and her tag oh, team nice. partner Judy Martin. Judy Martin will be with us. <laughs> but, Judy, and I talk over each other. Yeah, we've tried that oh. before, and we can't. Ne- yeah. yeah, you know what yeah. I'm going to do. I'm going to do another show just with you, just by yourself. Because I think we barely, yeah, you know why? Because we barely scratched the surface. But, you know, we only have limited time. We only have, you know, an hour show. So, but it was that was a fast hour, Chris. Oh, yeah, it flew by. Wow. I forgot really most did. of my questions. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Joyce. I, I'll tell you what. I'm, I have my... I actually have my schedule book right here. I'll tell you what. I want to do this right now while I got you. While I got okay. you here, lady. Why don't we do... How about this one? How about we do July 21st? Okay. That Can you good. do that? Cool. I think so. Why don't we do that? Oh, no. You know oh. what? Let let's not let's do this. Hold on, I got I got something better. Let's move it okay. up to July second. Okay. July second. I don't want to I don't want to wait all the way into middle you know the middle of July. I want to do it right at the oh, beginning right. of July. So I'm going to okay. put you in my, I'm going to put you in right now. Watch this. It is, I got my book right here. <laughs> See, here's my book. I'm going to put you in right now. Joyce Grable. Joyce part two. All right, Chris, you'll be back with me July 2nd. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to <laughs> talk to some of these ladies. Thank you for some really good questions because I, the heart of the question is better out life. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to thank you for being here with me. And uh, I'll tell you, what, it's been an honor and I can't wait for part two. Yeah. And uh, I just wish we had more time tonight. I really do. So I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to say good night to you. And uh, and I will give you a call tomorrow. And uh, and I will make sure that the link is up on your Facebook page. So you can share it with okay. everybody. Okay. All right. I enjoyed it immensely. And y'all have a good night. Thank you. you. Take care, night, Joyce. Joyce. Good night, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, that was great. That was great. Yeah. That was a great interview. It really I tell was. You what, she's, that's the first, you know, and she talked about it, too. You know, when her and the other girls get together, they talk over each other. Yeah. And so I didn't want that to happen. So I wanted to, I wanted her to have her own, you know, her own show. Yeah. And totally I want to bring her back. July 2nd. Yeah. Because I think that's, that would be, I don't want to wait till July 21st. That's too long. Yeah. We'll do July 2nd. So. Sounds good to me. Mr. Bergstrom, you, uh, you done good on your first outing here, kid. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was nervous. Thank you I for setting this good. up. I appreciate it. And you, the great artwork behind me. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And. I will definitely, I mean, I can talk to some of the other lady wrestlers about, you know, coming on your show in the future, too. I'm sure I could convince uh, Princess Little Cloud to do it, because she's a really great lady, and she has so many stories to share, Why don't too. we do that? Why don't we try to get her? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you try to reach out to her? Well, my friend, I uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you for the uh, amazing artwork. That was beautiful. Look at that background. That's oh yeah. Any, anytime you want me to throw something together for the artwork, for I love show, how I'm happy to. 
I, I love how he says throw the throw it together. <laughs> like that would that would take me a week to do that. Oh well, yeah, it doesn't. If I could even pull long. it off. Yeah. yeah. Well, I will tell you what, Chris, I, uh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, thank you for having me. Oh, I will tell you what, it was uh, it was amazing, and uh, we will definitely have you back. So I am going to say uh, good night to everyone. So uh, right. before we do. Before we do, I want you to get all your social media in, get all your plugs in, anything you want yeah. to promote. Um, so I am writing for slamwrestling.net. It is uh, out of Calgary, Greg Oliver. And um, I'm working on my second article for this site now on the great Olga Martinez, who oh, recently oh. passed away. And yeah. wife of Don Serenado, another great legend of wrestling. Sure, sure. Yeah. And Absolutely. Uh, you can also follow my uh, page on Facebook, Fabulous Moolah and the Ladies of Camp Moolah. <laughs> I love that. I belong to that page, by the way. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Let me ask you a question Have you ever heard of a movie called Below the Belt? I have heard of it. I have not seen it, though. It's on YouTube. Okay. I want you to check it out. It's a right. great, great movie with some amazing legends in wrestling. All right. And I will check that Mildred, out. Mildred Burke makes a cameo appearance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You have to really, like, don't blink because it's, like, real short. <laughs> 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 and there's another great. Uh, a, a great a wrestling movie, a great women's movie called uh, Lipstick and Dynamite. Yes, that one I have seen many times. That's, oh my God. Great all the film. legends. They're all in it. Everybody's yeah. in it. Yeah. Oh, what a I, great movie. And, and like you said, you know, kind of about the ladies not getting along and having bitter rivalries while well, they had them still oh, on yeah. lipstick and dynamite. Oh yeah. And they, and they <laughs> pulled back. The curtain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You want to see that'll open your eyes. <laughs> it's called lipstick and dynamite piss and vinegar. Yes, it is. That's yep. the name of the movie. And I think that's available. I believe that's available on uh, Amazon Prime. Yes. It's also available on Tubi TV. Okay. And so check that film out. It's a great film. For us here at Wrestling Future, you can find us on Facebook.com forward slash Wrestling with the Future. That's our public page. We also have a private group. It's Wrestling with the Future podcast. That's a private group. You can join that. You answer two or three questions, and uh, then you're in. Uh, our YouTube channel is Wrestling with the Future Podcast. Make sure you put in Wrestling with the Future Podcast, and we pop, we pop right up. We're on Twitter at Wrestling Future, no G, Wrestling Future on, uh, on Twitter. And if you want to hit me up, I'm at Angelo DeCipio on Facebook. So send me a friend request and, uh, or hit me up. If you have questions, comments, or show suggestions, wrestlingwiththefuture at gmail.com is the email. We answer everything that comes in. If it takes us a couple days, just bear with us. I'm, I'm one guy. So uh, for Chris Bergstrom, for Wrestling With The Future, I'm Psychic Medium Angelo. Thanks for joining us. Happy wrestling, everybody. Goodbye.